Hey everybody, Vivian here with my first video tutorial as a guest designer for Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. I'm so happy to be here. I wanted to share with you a little bit of my inspiration that went into this art journaling page that I'm going to share with you today. I get a lot of inspiration from nature and nature definitely has a place in most of my projects. Um, and I find a lot of truth in nature as well. Uh, the recent developments in our country and in our world have had me in a really meditative state of mind this holiday season. Um, and I found this quote that really resonated with me by Hal Borland, no winter lasts forever, no spring skips its turn. This quote definitely gives me a deeper feeling of hope. And the process of making this page has helped me get through some of the more difficult moments of some personal tragedy in my own life. So I'm going to share with you how it all came together. So I don't know about you guys, but most of the time when I actually do regular plain old journaling, it's to help me get through something difficult. Um, this was one of the few pages actually that was entirely positive, but I just would rather not remember it or have an opportunity to look at it again. Um, so I decided to cover it up with gesso and I'm using the edge of a credit card. You could use a credit card or a library card or expired insurance card, whatever and use the edge with gesso to create a varied surface. I'm using an Art Grip Aquarelle watercolor pencil that comes in the Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Mix and Match Mixed Media Sampler. This sampler is in the family of blue colors, so there will be a little blue dot at the top right hand corner of the pa package. Um, and let's say you're just getting started out in mixed media you can be sure that when you pick up this pack, um, all the colors will coordinate nicely. I'm using a watercolor paintbrush that came in my full set of gelatos from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft that I picked up a while back. And it's really cool and convenient. I had a fan um, Corrine actually asked me about how to use watercolor pencils. And I think when you're working on a small scale, these types of brushes become really convenient. You press down on a little button on the pen and it releases water that's inside a little container in your brush. And immediately your hues become saturated and wet and show all the beautiful properties that watercolor can offer. I just a little a little bit of blowing. Sometimes I blow on my work and that just helps create the media move across the page in a way that's organic. And I'm rubbing the pencil over the wet areas too and that tends to give you a more intense concentration of color on your page. And if you notice, the areas that didn't have gesso actually absorb the pigment more intensely and I'm really going for that. So now I'm applying a Pit Pastel pencil that comes in the same mix and match media mixed media sampler uh, as and this is a, a more of a teal color um, and this is sort of the progression as winter gives way to spring. I pulled out some Art Grip Aquarelle watercolor pencils that come in the Mix and Match Mixed Media Aquarelles and Ink packet from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. This is in their yellow dot set. Um, and I'm just drawing those colors over my page in the same way that I did with the blue. The color dot system that Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft has is really helpful for those of you just starting out with mixed media or who might not have that much experience in art or color theory. Um, when you pick up a pack of this stuff, you'll be sure to have projects that are co color coordinated well, colors that will go well with each other together. 
I think it's also really helpful to be able to, when you're going through a, for a certain feeling in your projects, and you know that a certain color family makes you feel a certain way, to be able to reach for one package of mixed media supplies and know that you'll be able to create that effect. Here, um, in the upper part of my page, I'm going for a feeling of spring, a feeling of light and hope, and I think these types of colors help me achieve that. So now I'm adding some gelatos into the mix. I don't know if any of you uh, have experience with gelatos. They're a really wonderful form of media to add to your crafting toolbox. The texture is very luscious. Uh, I would compare them to lipstick. Um, very soft and blendable. I'm now adding a gelato in metallic mint. And now that I'm working on a little bit of a larger scale, I'm just using a regular uh, synthetic, water, synthetic brush to spread all those colors um, across my page and have them mixed together in a nice organic fashion. All of these different types of media that I've been applying to my page are all water soluble. The gelatos are also blendable dry if you so choose. For this project I was going for something that really integrated well all the colors so I went I went wet. Just blending it all together. And I don't know if you noticed I spread some salt on top of the wet areas. So this is a technique that I haven't really shared before on my channel which is Contadina K on YouTube. Uh, through my experience with watercolor, uh, I had the great opportunity to play around with salt. And by spreading salt onto your page in different consistencies, table salt gives you a different effect than kosher salt. Some of the thicker, chunkier salts give different effects, so I'd suggest that you play around with both. This is a kosher salt. It's a little bit larger grained than regular table salt. And when you work on a surface that's been gessoed like this, you'll end up with an effect that's a little bit different than if you were to work on a more absorbent type of paper. And I'll show you in just a second how, just for, so you can see how that looks. So this is what happens on a gessoed surface with your water-soluble media. In areas where there were grains of salt, the salt absorbs the media and creates more variety in your painted surface. A variety that's somewhat grungy and also very much reminds me of various rocks like certain granites. I really love it. It's, it's a really fun thing to work with. But once you apply that salt, you want to wait for that sucker to dry because you need to let the salt work its magic. And then you need to brush off all remnants of salt before you add on any other media. I just wanted to show you quickly a painting that I did using pure watercolor. And this was on a very sturdy piece of watercolor paper uh, without any gesso applied. So do you see that effect with the salt on the in the background? This is a tomato, a Costa Ludo variety tomato that I grew in my Las Vegas garden in the summer. It was delicious, but it grew in a very gnarled, interesting fashion, so I decided to paint it. But I just wanted to show it to you since I'm talking about salt today. So you could see that when you have just a plain watercolor surface, you get an effect with the salt that's a lot like frost on a windowsill. And it's really beautiful, I think. <clears throat> At this point, I decided to do some heat embossing. So I wanted to create some snowflake shapes in the bottom portion of my page. I'm running a anti-static device that you can get at any craft store. It's, it's just a little pillow with some powder in it. And I'm using a snowflake from my Hampton Art stamp set from one of their Christmas releases. 
with some watermark ink. So I want to ink that up really well with the watermark ink and stamp that snowflake shape wherever my designer's eye tells me to. Once I got all of my snowflake shapes stamped, I sprinkled some clear embossing powder on top. And this part is a little bit tricky because you need to look at your page from a certain angle to be able to see where you stamped all of your images to make sure that sticky watermark ink adhered to the powder that you put onto your paper. Once you've got that done, you want to set your heat tool. Here you can see clearly where those snowflakes are stamped. You want to set that heat tool on your stamped images and get that powder to transform into a clear resist. Once you do that, you're going to be able to preserve those snowflake shapes and prevent the application of further media from absorbing into the paper surface. So you can see it there. I'm going to start stamping in the upper portion of my page using a clear bloom stamp that comes in the mix and match set one of the mix and match sets that I have. A lot of these sets come with some really beautiful stamps. I really like this one. It's very graphic and it's got a lot of detail, which I love in a stamp. So I'm using my Stamper's Big Brush Pens. It's a combination of orange glaze and dark chrome yellow. These Stamper Big Brush Pens are made with odorless India ink. It doesn't bleed through your pages. It's waterproof, light fast, and archival. And I just have to tell you, um, they're just so much fun to use. They're nice. They have a beautiful brush nib on the top. And as you can see, you can stamp your images with one color, two colors, a mix of colors to create a gradient. It's really easy to start your collection of Stamper's Big Brush Pens if you step-by-step step just pick up the mix and match media samplers because usually there's always a Big Brush Pen in each set that you can start using. I have to make a confession. Once these became available, I got the full gift set for myself. <laughs> and I haven't been disappointed. So you can use these to color in your stamped images if you've got line, line stamped images. Um, and you can also use as a really affordable option for coloring stamped images instead of getting those um, some other marker, markers that you see out on the market. You can use your watercolor pencils with your watercolor brush and that's a really great option. So I'm going to use that beautiful branch set stamp from my Hampton Art Stamp Set and color it in. This is a cobalt turquoise color that comes in my blue mix and match mixed media sampler. I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not that much of a line stamp colorer. I am much more of a graphic image type of stamper. This type of stamp, the bloom stamp, things that are completely colored in, um, not with open spaces that you would color in yourself. If I do use those, I don't usually color them in at all. I'm really excited about this branch stamp because even though it comes from a Christmas stamp set, I am going to use that branch for projects throughout the year. I think it's really beautiful and delicate. I did a little bit of gradient stamping, I don't know if you noticed, with this stamp. In addition to that blue, I also used a Stamper's Big Brush Pen that comes in the Mixed Media Sampler in green, and that Stamper's Big Brush Pen is in leaf green. I'm laying in some gelato in metallic blueberry around the very base of my page. This is also water-soluble, 
but once it's dry, it's got a more opaque feeling than the watercolors. And I want to create some darker areas that recede and some lighter areas that glow. Now you can see that the snowflake shapes are still retained. And if you were to go over that with a napkin or a paper towel, you, you could have those um, images show up more in a more pronounced fashion. As I started this page and I covered up my writing with gesso, I did take time to notice what I had written and remember some of the words that were on that page. So as a way of moving through a difficult experience, I added some of those words so you can see effort that still shows through from underneath. For some reason or another, these words and phrases stuck with me once my page got closer to its final finished state. In order to write those words, I used a metallic pit artist pen that came in my mix and match mixed media sampler in blue. I've been playing a lot with hot glue in all of my projects for the last couple of months. Oh, as you can see, I did some stamping with the same snowflake stamp and some white pigment ink because I, I wanted to add in some lighter areas. But I've been playing around with my hot glue gun a lot to create what I call organic vascular effects. I just draw the hot glue in organic patterns all over my page and I experiment with different thicknesses and variety in my stream of hot glue and it creates a very interesting vascular effect that I'm still experimenting with and exploring. You can do a lot with this stuff. I've used it to create exactly that, a feeling of, of flesh. Uh, and I've used it also to create a sense of branches. It can be evocative of a number of different things. Here, a gelato in a very deep blue. It's called boysenberry. And this is a really great way to innovate with your gelatos. You can blend them dry, you can blend them wet, you can mash them up and dilute them in water and put them in a little mini spritzer and create your own spritzes. You could mix those colors to, together to create a customized shade for your spritz. And I wanted to create a really deep shade. Those of you guys who follow me on my channel at Considina K on YouTube, you've already seen me do this technique Hopefully you're not sick of it yet. I'm not. <laughs> um, but I use a very deep, deep shade, and I try to get it in all the nooks and crannies that were created by my hot glue um, to really expose the textures in the hot glue that I laid down. And as you saw me do with the watercolor pencils that also, I use a water a bottle, a spritzer bottle, and I fill it with water to sort of guide my pigments on my page to get them to move where I want them to go. Um, you have to sort of be comfortable with a more loose style of working and things going in various places. The water also dilutes color when you want it to. Um, so if something ends up being too dark and you spritz, a lot of people are intimidated by spritzing. Uh, you can always lighten, up, lighten this up with some water. So when you spritz so heavily like this, it's less spritzing and more drizzling. So I think from now on I'm going to call this drizzling instead of spritzing <laughs> because as you can see there's a little bit of that spritziness in the top part of my page, but it's very much about pouring that stuff on there and just getting turning your page this way and that and getting your color to move around on your page in a really organic way. I had a fan write me on my public Facebook page saying that she was having some trouble with it. My suggestion is just to really play around with it um, 
without giving yourself any, without making any demands on yourself that it turn out a certain way. If you like this effect, who knows, you may come up with a different way of using the hot glue that really floats your boat and gives your, your project an effect that's completely different than what I have on mine. So I'm uh, using a cosmetic sponge to add white pigment ink. I'm using white pigment ink right now to the very tops of the ridges that I created with my hot glue. This is getting them to really pop off the page more. I've actually found that white can do that, but black can also do that in a different way. So I'm adding some black on there too. This sort of gnarled effect that I created along the base of my project very much represents my winter. And I think in some ways, for me, it represents our collective winter uh, and all the, the trials and tribulations that make it impossible for me to look at the newspaper anymore without crying. <laughs> um, anyway, so here's a close-up of the final project. You can still see just the effect of snowflakes. You can, if you look closely, you can see some of the words. You've got that gnarled winter that gives way to a beautiful spring. And like I said at the beginning of my video, I think this quote very much represents my hopes for the new year and for our world. Here's a full shot of my page. And I will share some detail shots with you in a few seconds. I hope I was able to share with you a few new techniques or old ones that you might have forgotten about. I'm so excited to be guest blogging for Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. This is a portion of the base of my page, which represents winter to me, this winter. And this is a detail of uh, the transitional period and at the very top of my page, my representation of spring. Thank you so much for watching. My videos tend to be about this long. Um, I hope you'll be back to see more. I do videos quite regularly and will be continuing to do them regularly for he from here on in. My channel is Contadina K. And you're welcome to visit me on my blog as well, which is contadinak.wordpress.com. Thanks so much, and see you again really soon. Bye-bye.